This week, OpenAI hosted its latest developer day in San Francisco, and the food choices on offer at the event were top-notch, with guests enjoying a taco salad with watermelon radish and a chili lime vinaigrette. But what about the product announcements? At the event, OpenAI revealed a bunch of new offerings which could be pretty important for product teams. And in this video, we'll look beyond the hype that's often associated with these launch events to take a closer look at what these offerings are and what impact, if any, they might have on the future of product development. And as always, if you enjoy the channel, hit the subscribe and the like button. So the two main announcements at the event were AgentKit and ChatGPT apps. So let's first take a look at AgentKit in a bit more detail. AgentKit includes Agent Builder, which is essentially a visual canvas that allows you to create and version multi-agent workflows. It lets developers build agents for specific use cases on a single canvas, and it comes with inbuilt capabilities and nodes that users can access to build workflows. OpenAI has published a list of all of the nodes that are available on their documentation, and these are categorized into four distinct categories. These categories include core nodes such as Start, Agent and Note, Tool nodes for things like File Search, Guardrails and MCP, Logic nodes and Data nodes. These form the basis of the agentic workflows that users can create, and as part of the release, OpenAI has provided a series of templates that you can start with including a planning agent, a customer service agent, and an internal knowledge assistant. The Agent Builder also ships with trace grading, which lets you run end-to-end -end assessments of agentic workflows, and automated prompt optimization, which helps you to optimize your prompts based on human annotations. Now, my first thought as I was watching these announcements was that for a developer day, a lot of this doesn't seem particularly developer-centric. In my experience at least, developers really don't enjoy using drag-and-drop interfaces like this. And in a sense, this tool seems more developer-adjacent than anything else, since a visual canvas can be used by anyone. If you read OpenAI's marketing and case studies, you'll actually see that this seems to be their pitch. The case studies talk about product teams aligning multiple stakeholders and cutting down the overall time it takes to get agents live. This quote from Ramp says that the visual canvas keeps product, legal, and engineering on the same page, slashing iteration cycles by 70%, and getting an agent live in two sprints rather than two quarters. So in this sense, AgentKit is a multidisciplinary product designed to get everyone on the same page by letting them see the agent's workflows, guardrails, and functionality all in one place. This seems like a smart move, since building agents is actually a multidisciplinary undertaking today. Before an agent goes live, you typically need input from legal, product, and engineering all working together because the consequences of getting it wrong can be pretty catastrophic. AgentKit also comes with another complementary SDK called ChatKit, and this lets product teams embed the agents that they build onto the front end. You can either host the agent yourself or let OpenAI host it, and the idea here is that you can easily build and deploy these agents to be used either by internal users or by customers. In ChatKit, developers can integrate custom-built widgets, and as you might expect, these widgets are interactive visual representations of information that developers can design and integrate into agents. OpenAI has published a pretty nice gallery of some of the examples of these widgets, and these include things like travel and weather widgets, as well as e-commerce related widgets that allow you to track your orders. Some people are labeling all of this as the Zapier or N8N killer, but there's still a long way to go until that happens. The other major announcement from OpenAI was the launch of ChatGPT apps, and shortly after the announcement, Anderson Horowitz investor Anish Akara said that the launch re represented a moment that was likely as important as Steve Jobs announcing the App Store back in March 2008. I'm old enough to remember that launch, but I'm also old enough to remember when GPTs launched just two years ago, and since then they plopped pretty badly, so personally I'm erring on the side of caution with this one. But what are these apps and what can you do with them? Well, these apps essentially allow you to interact with some of your favorite products directly inside the ChatGPT interface without ever having to leave it. OpenAI says that it has been working closely with partners, including Booking.com, Canva, Coursera, Spotify, Figma, and others. And as part of the launch, they showed off some of the things that you can do with this. To start using an app, you simply reference the app's name followed by the action that you want to take. So for example, you could say, Spotify, make me a playlist for my party this Friday without ever having to use Spotify separately. Figma also shared an example of how its app can be used directly inside ChatGPT, where it shows you how you might create a process diagram in ChatGPT, make a few edits, and then finesse it over on Figma. This is all built using MCP, and OpenAI says that more functionality will be added. 
To coincide with the launch, a new app developer kit is also being released, along with some design guidelines for product teams to consider. A good app, OpenAI says, should answer yes to some of the following questions. Does the task fit naturally into a conversation? So, for example, booking, ordering, scheduling, and quick lookups. Is the information valuable in the moment? In other words, can the user act on it right away? And does it extend ChatGPT in a way that feels additive or differentiated? Given ChatGPT's scale, with it fast approaching 1 billion users, many commentators have been quick to say that this is a no-brainer for app developers as the new platform to build upon. But is this true? Do users actually want to interact with software in this way? And will the average user understand this concept of using one interface to reference and connect with third-party applications all in one place? Many of ChatGPT's users won't be particularly technical and may not conceptually understand the concept of interacting with other apps all in one place. If we take a look at the latest in-depth data released by ChatGPT, we can see that some of the most popular current use cases for ChatGPT include getting practical guidance and writing. As part of this research, OpenAI categorized the major use cases into three core categories. The three categories are asking, doing, and expressing. Asking is when a user wants facts, advice, or clarification to make better decisions, such as what should I look for on a health plan or how do I create a budget? Doing is when the user wants the model to create or transform output for immediate use, so things like rewriting an email, drafting a report, generating code, or extracting information into a CSV. And expressing is neither seeking information or requesting a task. It's a conversation, views, or feelings, such as chit-chat or personal reflections. In the data, 49% of the messages are asking, 40% are doing, and 11% are expressing. As you can see from this chart, the number of chats which are doing is actually declining. But when we look exclusively at work-related tasks, doing is more prevalent, with 56%. And nearly three-quarters of those messages are writing tasks, highlighting ChatGPT's value in producing usable artifacts at work. So when we think about these new apps, many of these new apps are likely to be categorized as doing, since they can perform actions. So it'll be interesting to see if users turn to ChatGPT to help them to do stuff, or whether they continue to mostly treat it as a personal assistant and mentor. The launch of apps may represent a fundamental shift in how users rely on and interact with SaaS products as OpenAI seeks to build a super agent. But just because ChatGPT has a massive distribution channel doesn't mean that user behavior will change and suddenly embrace these apps. For product teams pondering whether or not to build a ChatGPT app, perhaps the best thing to do right now is to give it a few weeks and to see how adoption and engagement is shaping up before doubling down and building your own dedicated app. What do you think? Can you imagine using these new apps in ChatGPT? Are you likely to use the new visual canvas for building agents? And what did you think of OpenAI's dev day overall? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.